demonstration of uh, the industrial automation laboratory wherein I'll be demonstrating you how to tune a PID controller for the heat exchanger using distributed control system. When you click on to this experiment, you will go to the theory pretest procedure. After reading the procedure, go to the simulator and the simulator will look like this. Now this is typically a simulator wherein you will have analog input, analog output, digital output and digital input. There are control instructions, math operation related instructions, timer control related instructions, logic operations and counter. I will add a program in area 0. So what I will do is I will connect a DI, a digital input module and I will connect it to a DO. Now to connect this click on here and drag till it shows the circle. So now this is connected. Similarly, I will take one more uh, DI block and I'll connect it over here. I'll take another DO block and I'll connect it over here. Now this DI block, I'll connect it to DO. Now what I'm doing is I'm configuring this DI DO block for the pump and the heater. So this DI block is the value which I'm going to give manually so I am keeping this DI as none. For a DO I will right click and I will go to configure. While configuring it I will configure this as pump 101. This is nothing but a pump which is used as a feed water pump for the boiler. Similarly I will configure another DO block for the heater. So I will call this as heater because I want to start the heater. So I will submit this. Now when I start the heater and uh, the feed, these are the DOs, but then we have to give the AI and AO commands because there is a provision to modulate or regulate the firing angle of the heater and the speed of the pump. So what I will do, I will select AI and AO block for respective SCR and the pump and then connect it over here then connect this to the next value now here also we are going to give these values AI and AO values in manually so I am connecting them as none so I can place the block like this so now I will configure AO block now this AO block is meant for a VFD of 101 that means this is the variable frequency drive for the inlet uh, boiler feed pump. I will submit. Similarly, I will configure this for the SCR control. So I will write here as SCR and I will submit the value. So I have configured this value. Then I want to add the uh, instructions related to the uh, heat exchanger side. I will add a tab because area 0 is assigned for boiler and then area 1 will come which is assigned for the heat exchanger. Now in the heat exchanger what I will do is I will add again a DI block, another DI block and a DO block like we have done it in the previous case and then we will connect them. Alright, so this what we have done. Then we will configure this DO block. Now we will configure this DO block for pump 301. This is a tag number of the pump which is used for the circulation pump of the heat exchanger. I will submit this. But now I have selected this as a wrong one. So I will delete this. So he will ask me a question. Do you want to really delete? I will delete this also and I will delete DO also. Now I will add AI and AO because this pump is also controlled by VFD. So I want to give the value for the speed at which this pump has to run. So I'll configure this for uh, VFD 301 and I'll submit this value. Now what I have done is I have started the circulation pump and the objective of this experiment 
is to control the outlet water temperature. So what I will do, I will select AI and AO and then I will select a PID value. I will go to control, there I will find a PID value and I will put a PID block over here. Now once I put a block in this, I will connect them. So input of the temperature transmitter would be given to the PID controller as the process variable and output of the PID controller will be given to I2P converter. Then I have to configure this AI block. Now this AI block I am using as TT3. Now this TT3 is nothing but the outlet water temperature of the heat exchanger. I will configure this as a control wall that is FCV1. And then I'll submit this value. Then we will configure a PID controller. Now this PID controller I will write here as PID1 as the description. Then I'll select mode of this PID controller. I wish to put this in auto mode. Action is direct. And the controller type is PID controller. And I will use this as a non-interactive one and the set point is 30 percent maximum value of the controller output is 100 minimum value is 0 proportional gain I can set as 5 at present to start with the bias I have kept it at 50 derivative gain is kept at 2 the initial controller output is 50 integral gain is 2 and the scan time is 3 means every after 3 seconds your PID controller will calculate the values. I will submit this indicating that the PID controller is configured. Now likewise everything related to boiler and heat exchanger is configured. Then I'll compile this program. Compile. After the compilation is done run button will be active so I'll ask this to run. Then I'll have to download this program. So I have downloaded this program. Then you will find that the values will start coming up. A PID is now 100 because the set point is 30 and the temperature at present is 15. That means there is a gap of 15 percent. So the wall has fully opened. If you look at the other side of this, I have to now switch on the uh, pump and the heater. So what I will do, I will go to here and toggle DI. Similarly, I will go to the other and I will toggle. Now what will happen is the heater will get switched on. Once I toggle this, the heater will get switched on. So this has become 1. Naturally this pump will become 1. But there is a delay because there is a scan time concept. So I'll make it one. So this pump is on, the heater is on. And now I have to give value to the SCR. So what I will do, I'll give value to the SCR. For example, if I give this to 70%, VFD is I'll set it to 50% suppose to start with. So VFD is 50%. That means currently the motor is running at 50% speed. Similarly, the SCR that is heater SCR is running at 70%. So I'm not giving full heat. So what will happen is the output would become 50. Uh, 70 for heater and 50 for pump. Now if you look at this, you will find that in the other case, the temperature will go on increasing, uh, the PID controller will st uh, start getting these values. Now I want to start the pump, which is for the heat exchanger in this area. So I will toggle this. So the pump has uh, is made on and I will keep this flow. 
at some moderate value and that can be as low as 30 percent. I will submit this value indicating now this will indicate that the heat exchanger input is 30 percent speed flow is move, moving through this. Now if I want to see the mimic so we will go to mimic and you will find that if I click on to the mimic the mimic will look like this. Go down and find out how your mimic looks like. Just look at this mimic. Now this heater is on the temperature has gone up to 24 uh, degrees Celsius. This is the boiler temperature. Level in the boiler currently is 81.53. Pressure is 1.2. The boiler is designed for 3.5. The wall is fully open. The temperature, uh, the temperature of the outlet is only 26 degrees Celsius. 13.54 uh, multiplied by 2, it's 26. And uh, you will find that uh, the VFD as 50% and the uh, pump is at 30%. This is how the scheme is. Now what will happen? This will go on working. The temperature will go on rising. We will monitor this temperature. After you receive the temperature equivalent to uh, 135 and the pressure of 3.5, you will find that the outlet temperature of the heat exchanger will go above the set point. If your PID tunings are correct, it will get tuned where you will re receive error equal to zero. Now what else you have to do is you have to keep on playing with this PID controller value and then once you do this you will change the PID controller value as if you want so you can change it by configuring it. Similarly you can plot the trends and you can see the trends. Now what do you want to check? If you plot the trends you will find that I want to check what is TT3, what is FCV because you want to check what is the output of this and you can plot this. So click on to the plot and the values will be plotted.